Let's learn how to use object-oriented programming in JavaScript with our purpose being that we're going to make our own class, our own attributes, methods, constructors, and be able to create objects and load up all that data and work with it. Now that might sound pretty intimidating at first. So let's back up just a little bit and talk about what is OOP. In object-oriented programming, everything that we do and represent can be accomplished through the use of objects. Everything you do in your life is object-based. For instance, when you woke up this morning, maybe there was an alarm clock that went off on your phone. And then you reached over and you touched your phone. You probably pressed snooze, but that's okay. The phone itself is an object, and you're an object. And these objects have different characteristics or attributes. And those attributes describe the object to somebody. For instance, if there was a person lying in their bed sleeping, that person is an object. Maybe the attribute is hair color and first name and last name and height and weight and date of birth and location of birth. All these different characteristics describe that object. The phone itself is an object. Maybe it's a model or a brand, a type. How much memory does it have? Price of the phone. That describes the phone to somebody. And through, through the use of these objects, we can make our programming life easier. Because otherwise, we would have to create a whole bunch of variables and keep track of information, when instead, we can just work with an object and create that information. Now what does that really mean? Well, let's come back over to here and let's say that we have this file. Go create an HTML file. I called mine useclasses.html. And then type in this foundational code where we have our doc type, our HTML, our body, an input for a button with the label of click me and when they click on it we're going to go to a function called run class and then we have our script tag so let's go ahead and write this function run class and let's say that every time they click on that button we want to store information about a person and that information we want to store would be their first name and their last name. We'll just start with just those two things, first name and last name. But let's say that when we run this, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that we want to track. So we'd have to then say first name one, first name two, sorry, last name one, and we would have to duplicate this for all the people that we wanted to track. In fact, let's say there's just five right there. And so we would have a first name and a last name for the per first person, first name and a last name for the second person. Sorry, I should pay attention to what I'm typing. And a first name and a last name for the third, fourth, and fifth person. What if there were 100 people? Do you really want to go copy that for 100 people or 1,000 people? It just seems to be a pain and too much work. Well, what if instead I could package up all this information and just store it to one variable? And that variable is going to represent a person. In order for us to do something like that, we would first have to go and build a template or a mold for that person. And that template or mold would describe the information that we're trying to store. And here's how you do it. You say the word class, and you give it a name. Mine's going to be person. That was what I'm going to track. And then in that class, you can specify what attributes you want to store for a person. I want to store a first name, and I want to store a last name. If you notice, when I created these variables, I didn't say the word var on them. In fact, notice when I put my cursor on it, it says that this is an actual property for the class. 
a property is an attribute or a characteristic. And I could specify as many attributes as I want for that class. In order to create this object from the class, because that's the whole purpose of the class, is to be a template or a mold that we can make objects from. I could now come here and say var o person, I like to use Hungarian notation, o meaning object, equals new person. This says create a variable and assign it a new object of type person. Notice the way you do this is you say the class name parenthesis parenthesis. This will now go and create the object of type person. So that means once the object is created, there's the object name, period, we now have attributes or properties we can work with. First name equals Mickey and O person dot last name equals mouse. And so we created an object based upon this class using the new keyword. Once the object comes out, it now gets all the properties created or assigned to that class. I can then load up the properties, assign them values, and print them out. If I wanted to print them out, I could say alert o person dot first name. And that would access the value in the first name attribute or property for this object in this class. Let's go ahead and just run it and see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and run this program. We'll click me and it displays Mickey. Now how did that actually work? When we come back to here, we said click on this. If we click on it, we execute this function. This function says create a variable by assigning it a brand new object of type person. Once it creates that object, that object now has a first name attribute and a last name attribute. We assign them values and then if you want to access them, you just say object dot whatever the attribute name is. What does this mean we could do? Do you remember when we first started, we said, what if we had a whole bunch of people we wanted to store information about? Well, now what we do is the following. I'm going to go ahead and wipe out some of this code. And I can come right here and create an array. I'm going to say it's an array of object of type person. You could have called this anything you want. I'm using Hungarian notation. And I'm saying that it's an array of object of type person. And this is going to be an empty array. And then I'll say, uh, by the way, I'm missing, there, there we are. I'm going to say for var I count equals zero, as long as I count is less than three. We'll go ahead and increase I count by one. And in this loop, we're going to say the array name dot push. Now, if you don't remember this, go back and watch previous videos, but this dynamically adds an element to an array. Now, what do we want to push? I want to push a brand new object of type person. I don't need this statement anymore. This now says go to the array, add a new element, and put a person object in it. Well, what's in a person object? AO person square bracket I count. That says go to the array and access whatever is in the zero position because that's what I count is. And what zero is is our object we just added. So we have an object now in the first position of the array. What type of object? A person object. What does a person object have? Dot. It has a first name. And we could assign that some value. Let's say uh, we're going to assign it the value of Mickey and we're going to concatenate I count. So the first value we're going to add will be Mickey 1 or Mickey 0. And we'll store it to the first name of the object in position 0 of the array. And let me say that again. We're going to store Mickey 0 to the first name property or attribute 
in the object, that's what the dot is right there, in the object that's stored in position 0 of the array. And that's what we created when we said new person. And we'll do that for three times. In fact, if we wanted to, we could then do this loop again and say, let's go ahead and print off alert the array. Let's print off all of the elements in the array. Well, remember what's in the array. A list of objects. And let's go print the first name for every object in the array starting with position 0, 1, and 2. Let's save that and see how it works. And let's go ahead and uh, we're going to control shift I to open up the debugger. And I want to look at that code. And I'm going to set a breakpoint right here on line 17. I just click to set the breakpoint. If you need help with the debugger, go watch previous videos. So let's go ahead and click this. We come into this array or into this loop. We'll step. Here's our array. Nothing's in it right now. Length is zero. We're going to push an item. What are we going to push? A brand new object of type person. So we'll step into. Notice when I said step into, it came up to the class. And it's now grabbing the attributes. There's our class. Here's our array. We execute it. And we have a length of 1. Our array in position 0 now has a person object with a first name and a last name properties. They're currently undefined, but once I do this, I executed that line, and it said change the first name attribute for the object in the zero position. Let's take a look at it now. Here's our array. Zero position has a person object. The first name attribute now has Mickey zero in it. Last name is probably still undefined, which it is. If I ran through this again, push a new person object. We go up to the class, push the object. Now we have two person objects in the array. Go ahead and assign a value to the first name. So now we assigned Mickey 1 to that object. Every object has its own identity, meaning its own copy of all the attributes or properties. And you store different data in each of those properties. I'm going to set a breakpoint down here, clear that one out by clicking on it, and just click on that blue one to run. Let's take a look at the array. Now there's three objects in it, 0, 1, and 2. Person object in 0, person object in 1, person object in 2. They each have their set of properties from the class. Did you notice that? They each have their own set or copy of the properties from the class. And you can store and work with those. And then when we came down to this for loop, we would say, go to the person, go to the object 0, and access the first name for it. So we said, go to the object in position 0, access first name. It should put Mickey 0. The loop increments the I count. So it'll print Mickey 1 and Mickey 2. Let's get rid of the breakpoint and just run it. And we see Mickey 0, Mickey 1, Mickey 2. So how do we actually make a class? You just say the word class and a name. What is it going to be used for? Making objects. What can you do in that class? You can create attributes or properties. What are they used for? They're used for describing the object that we're going to create. I could have as many properties as I want in there. And they're just describing it. I could have an address, an, uh, a date of birth, an age, the hair color, the height, whatever. And these are just variables in the class, and we call them properties. When you create a new object, you use the keyword new. And then you specify the class name, and you put a parenthesis, parenthesis. That says create an object of type person. In this case, we stored it to an array. We didn't have to store it to an array. We saw that earlier. 
I could have just done this, var, o person. I don't have to say o person. I could have said I, not a very good descriptive name. I could have said o stuff, not a very good descriptive name. I like to say descriptive names. O person equals, how do you make a brand new object? New. What type of object? Person. Parenthesis, parenthesis. O person dot, and now you have access to the properties associated with that class. And that's how you create a template or a class which can be used to create objects that represent a bunch of data. Now you don't have to create a whole bunch of variables. You just make one variable of that object. We'll continue this and looking at other things with object-oriented programming and following videos.